as far as it'll go. But once I begin to feel some resistance, that's about as far as I'm going to go. This is passive range of motion. So if I truly want to know what her active range of motion is, I'm going to have to measure it by her performing it. So this is just to see how the joint moves and if there's a lot of crepitus and whatever. It so I've already checked the knee, right? Is there anything else I need to do there? Going on. No. Nope. <laughs> right? But we'll get to that. That's good. All right. Next, I'm going to come down to the foot because the only range of motion with the knee is flexion and extension, which I already tested. For the foot, you want to test dorsiflexion. So I am going to push up and dorsiflex the ankle. And now I am going to plantar flex the ankle. I am doing the movement here. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. For the next phase, you want to check inversion and eversion. Place the heels of your hand on either side of the calcaneus. And I want to apply pressure with my outside hand and relax my inside hand to allow the ankle to invert. Okay? I then want to apply pressure with my inside hand, relax my outside hand to allow the ankle to evert. But all my pressure is back here on the calcaneus not up here on the foot. If I, if I do this, what am I doing? Inverting. I'm inverting the foot. There's almost no movement at all taking place in her ankle. It's all taking place in these bones right here. So grabbing it up here and doing this is not inversion. Same thing on this side. Okay, relax and plant, uh, dorsiflex and plantar flex and then bring your heels down to the side invert the ankle and evert the ankle. Then I'm just going to slide my fingers up and I want you to bend, stabilize the MTP joint. Ask the patient to bend their toes as far as they can. Good. Straighten your toes out for me. Good. And same thing over here. Bend your toes and straighten them out. Good. And relax. Last part of the examination is actively performed and there's two ways that you can use your goniometer. You can use this to measure the range of motion through the range of motion, or you can ask the patient to bend your knee as far as you can. For me, please. And with this aligned with the femur, has to be in, a, in a alignment with the femur, the head of the goniometer, the scale, should be over the femoral condyle laterally, and then you just bring your dial down until this lines up with the line of the fibula and you measure that angle in which case in this particular case it is somewhere around I can't read it 100, <laughs> 140 okay 140 is normal questions on the goniometer that's yeah. so all you do just move it if you were if you were if you were to check it check it on this side sure Okay, go ahead and bend your other knee for me. You only have to do this. Does it say bilaterally in your notes? No. I don't see it anywhere. No, it's on the last page. It's a, it doesn't say bilaterally. Oh, you, you do have to measure the you do have to measure the cast bilaterally. Does it say goniometer has to be done bilaterally? No. So. All right. So yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll assess this. If you do it nicely on the first one, you may get deferred on the second one. All right. So same thing. Full range of motion. Line this up with the line of the femur. Make sure you're over the lateral condyle, and then line this up in direction with the tibia and fibula. And again. Measure the range of motion. In this particular case, it's about 145 degrees, it looks like. 120, 35, 40, 145. So, 140, 140.